Hi punters and welcome to the Saturday Racing Preview. In this video, of course, as you can see in the title, we'll be looking at the Ramwick meeting tomorrow, which will uh, be playing second fiddle to the Cox Plate, but of course will be able to help us get through uh, between each races at Mooney Valley. So looking at, at the card, decent enough meeting to, to support the, the Cox Plate program. Uh, we're going to get straight into it at the moment. Good four at the moment up there, fine conditions, so I don't think there's any chance that uh, the Randwick course will be changed on conditions, unlike Mooney Valley, which we'll have to keep an eye on and uh, just sort of keep watch on that. Now look at the first race of the card. It's a two-year-old race over 1,000 metres, race number one. Uh, obviously, we've just got to go off the trial form here. And uh, from what I've seen in the trials, I think this horse got a decent chance. Number five, close to me. I know it's the favourite, two hours 40, but it was well-deserved. That, that trial was terrific. Uh, at, where was it, was it Ramwick or, yeah, Ramwick, so over the 735 metres, showed a bit of ability on that occasion, so I think I'm going to put it on top, ahead of number two, Anders, who the Kiramar, Dave Eustace stable, do have quite a high opinion of it, had a good recent trial at Rose Hill, won that by eight lengths, uh, probably that was beaten by uh, Nitrous, so it's got to respect that recent trial, showed a lot of uh, speed in that, in that trial to win on that occasion, so I'm going to put it in for second, uh, in for third, number eight, see you soon. I think this horse got a bit of a chance. It was a decent uh, first trial at Warwick Farm and by Panacotta. Looked to have a bit under the bonnet there. I think it, it could have a good uh, little run well here. And the other chance I want to give is number three, Indoors, for the P and Paul Snowden's team. It's uh, it's trials reading in. Been okay. Uh, last time out, it was a, at the Bramwick Trials, a breakaway leader in Blazer Trail. So uh, willing to forgive that. Brazen Bow, two-year-old Colt. Gets Barry number one, so it's well drawn as well. So give it a decent chance. But for me, number five, close to me. She had gets off to a good start in the day in the first. Ahead of number two, Anders in for second. In for third, number eight, see you soon. And in for fourth, uh, number three, endorse. Move on to race number two. It's the Tab Highway race over 1,800 metres. It's the Tab Highway meeting and over the... Apologies about that. So this is the, the second race of the car is the Tab Highway meeting over the 800 metres as the Class 3 race. So first time we've seen this sort of highway race up to this type of distance. Uh, it's been quite interesting to see how some of these go in this. Uh, look at the speed map in this. Uh, say the Memory Man, Lord, Lord Dazamel, uh, Lord Lost Command, Ambitious Prince and Kuru will be probably the front runners. So not a not a stack of speed, but for an 800 metre race, they'll go a decent enough tempo. Uh, I'm pretty keen to be a black wand here. I did. I was with it last time out. It was a bit of a disappointing run, but I think this time around, stepping out there at 100 metres, is going to be far more improved. It was doing its best work late in, in its last uh, first up run, which, of course, was in the highway, 600 metre race behind Emanuela. I thought it was a decent enough run there, and it would be a good chance here. I only just missed out on third on that occasion. Uh, it's, it, from two starts second up, it's had a win and a placing, so I'd say that it'll be right in this, and $5 is a good price, $1.95 the place. Also looks a decent enough chance. Uh, number nine, but I know him for second. I think this horse uh, also has a decent chance in this race. It was very good in that Emanuela race. Came from back in the field. Really charged home late. Um, comes into this now with his fifth run of the preparation. Uh, it's in some good form. It's never missed a top four finish this prep. So I could give it a great chance in for the th second. Uh, in for third, number 11, Vertex. So I've been waiting this horse to step out in distance a little bit. Now it does get to do so here. Uh, it's had two uh, places at the track from two runs. Last time out, one at Queen Bend as a short price favourite, one quite well there. Prior to that, it was pretty good behind Bot, I know, at Rose Hill in a highway race. Uh, and prior to that, it was a good place behind Regal Toff at Goulburn. So I think this horse got a good chance stepping up the 800 metres. And uh, I'm going to put it in for third. A decent each way odds at $13 and $3.80. The other horse want to give a bit of a chance was number four, Ambitious Prince, I think. Uh, it's got a decent chance to be right up on the speed, I would suggest. Uh, its recent takeover trial was pretty good. Uh, it was at Lismore last time out, but it was beaten by Kudamara Al, only narrowly, um, 2,100 metre race there. And prior to that, it was beaten in Tung Curry by Lady Evelyn. So it's been racing some decent uh, country form and comes into this here. It's never missed a top four finish from for the last five starts. So I think it can run well here once again. Uh, where you came the numbers for me? Look, I'm going to go number two, black one on top for me. Ahead of number nine, but I know. In for second, in for third, number 11, Vertex. And in for fourth, number four, Ambitious Prince. Move on to race number three, 1,200 metre three-year-old Brian Crowley Stakes. Look at the speed map here. I'd say that Ferretti, Cardiff, Diamond Thunder will get forward. Hulk and Dirty Work, they'll all be up there. So there's a lot of speed in this race. Uh, as such, I do think it'll set up really nice for number eight regimental band here for Chris Lee's Brendan Adull in the saddle. But just, well, it was a decent enough run actually. It was went around dollar ninety last time at Kensington track and a benchmark seventy eight, but uh, benchmark seventy there. But 
Just didn't, wasn't really able to come into the race, but did hit the line well. It was a blanket finish there. Prior to that, it had been Akari at Wyong. Akari since come out won a better race at Warwick Farm. So the form's pretty good around this horse, and last preparation was beaten by Libertini, so decent enough form. I think this, this race suits perfectly for it. They're going to run at a decent clip. They're going to set it up perfectly for this horse to storm over the top. Uh, I do, don't mind the chance number three for Eddie here. It was a really good return to race race day on the Kensington track. Beat Bondi Blue has since come out and run well. Um, it was really good on that occasion on the Kensington track. But reproduced that sort of form, it'll go very close here. Number one, Diamond Thunder showed a lot of ability. Our last preparation comes into this first up. Had some decent trials at Randwick as of late, and it, it's got one, it'd be definitely one of the top chances. Last preparation, looking at former it beat California Zimbo at Doombin. Uh, beat Kubrick, beat the likes of Hulk who faces here. Uh, so it's got some really good form coming to this as well, and it'll be a good chance first up here to run in the placings. The other one is number six, Dirty Work. I think it can be, be in the finish as well. I'm not sure if they'll go to the speed with this horse, but it was very good last time out but, uh, behind Cosmic Force. It was only two lengths behind it. It's probably got the superior, superior form lines, really. It comes in here, beating two lengths by standout as well. Uh, I think it's got a great chance, uh, number six, Dirty Work, to run a good race as well. So really good race, the second on the card for the three-year-old side. But for me, number eight, Regimental Band on top. I think they're going to run at a perfect clip to set up for this horse to come over the top of them. Head of number three, Freddy, and for second, and for third, number one, Diamond Thunder, and for fourth, number six, Dirty Work. Moving on to race number four, 400 meter open race. It's the Robic Lodge Philanto Handicap. Look at the speed map here. I'd say Grey Worm, Improvement, and Gresham will find the top guy. Unders will probably be up there as well. But not a, a stack of speed of the race. And as such, I think Grey Worm will be pretty hard to beat here. Uh, it goes around as a 220 favourite, but it just looks perfectly suited for this horse. And I think it can improve off that last start run where it beat Thy Kingdom coming to benchmark 88. Uh, it's never missed a place in this track. It's never, it's only ever missed a place in once in its career. I just think that just this race just looks to run perfectly for it. And I think it'll be just a bit too good for these. Uh, I'll have them running and give them something to catch. Number nine improvements a very good chance as well. Uh, it'll be right up on the speed. It was pretty good last time. It went down and finished by Tafan in the Bass Straight Beef Stakes. It's coming out of Group Three form, so. Prior to that, was beaten by Sweet Scandal in, uh, by point two lengths since come out run well. So the former round improvement's very good. This also only missed a placing once from six starts at the track. So uh, it'll be right in the finish. Uh, number two order again for Brian Smith, the Queensland visitor. It's got a good chance. It went down to Caulfield. It was a bit disappointing in the uh, Turak handicap, but it was you know, brave of him to take on that sort of race. And prior to that, was beaten by pushing shapes and open race. So he's been running a good company. If it can run like it did, Last preparation during the Queensland Carnival, it will be right up to finishing in, in the placings here, and is drawn well in barrier number one. Uh, then in for fourth, number three, Lover Lover, probably the class of the field, definitely looking for further. Uh, it's first up coming to this uh, off a recent trial where it beat Harper's Choice. It was a pretty impressive trial, actually, but uh, it's got the far superior form, and this is horse that just consistently ran a group company last preparation, comes in an open class race here. But first up, over 400, I watched it um, perform, but... At the eleven dollars, could definitely make a case for it. Uh, it obviously did last preparation, uh, run a cu couple of decent races this sort of distance range. Uh, so looking at this, so just recap the numbers for me. Very good race number four here. It's uh, I'm going to go number five Graham on top. I do think it's a bit short, but I think the race is going to run a certain. It's going to be hard to beat. So I'm going to have it on top. Ahead of number nine improvement, and for second, and for third, number two order again, and in for fourth, number three lover lover. Moving to race number five, it's the uh, ICD pro property in a vision group three for the mares over 1,200 metres. Very good race, this one. Look at the speed map in this. Ready Profit, Spanish Dream will find the top. So Madame Rouge will be just sitting just in behind them. Uh, so not a whole lot of speed in the race. Uh, as such, I do think that the ones around the midfield and towards the front will be the ones to beat. Uh, look, I'm going to be go number two, Miss Fabulous here. I think it's a... Very nice each way option here. I thought it was quite good first up on Signore Fox. Carried a lot of weight on that occasion. Comes down to 57 kilos. Steps out to the, the well, actually, sorry, stays at the 1200 metres, which I don't think is its ideal distance range. But I just thought that it was a pretty good first up. But I'm going to stick with it here. Glenn Boss in the saddle. Looks mapped to get a really good run of the race. So I'm going to stick with it on top. And have number six, Ready to Profit, who will be rolling along in the speed. Uh, give him something to catch. It was pretty good. Um, our last time out, it was beaten by Mizzy. In the uh, Scirocco Stakes, form of that race has been terrific. Race of trial was very good as well. It's never uh, won at this track from three goes. That's why I wasn't going to put it on top. But uh, I'd give it a decent chance in for second. In for third, I think number three, Celebrity Dream, can improve here for Chris Waller. Another one of those West Australia galbers he took on. It was, I thought it was okay first up on Hawk Brown here. It was getting to line well 
Uh, second up stats are pretty good. It's had five starts, second up with two wins and a placing. Uh, and I think if we can improve off that first up run, comes back to the 1,200 metres here. Uh, might, might just run a good race at the $7 odds. It's definitely well overs. And uh, number nine, really, and Ruby is the other one I give a bit of a chance to. It's going to be a long way back in the field, but she'll be chasing on late. Uh, she was very good first up on Senora Fox that Mattis, in that um, Miss Fabulous race. Uh, others I've left out, Pretty in Pink, Multaja, Madame Rouge, they've all got great chances. It's, it really is a tough race, race number five, and as such I went with a bit of value at number two, Miss Fabulous on top for me. Head at number six, Ready to Profit, in for second, in for third, number three, Celebrity Dream, and in for fourth, number nine, Real Men Ruby. Moving to race number six, it's the uh, Lister 2500 metre Tattersalls Club Cup. Look at the speed map in this one. I'd say Rapido Shapara will find the top with Naval Warfare, and they'll fight out the, the front. Look at the and look, for me, I think Rapido Shapara will be pretty hard to beat here. It just looks to lead and dictate. It'll be extremely hard to beat. Uh, I really liked its last start performance where it beat Morton's Fork at the Port Macquarie Cup. Prior to that, it was just beaten by Dr. Drill, who came out one a, a very good edition of the Cranbourne Cup. So the form around this horse is very good. It's only missed a placing one... Um, what, sorry, it's... Has missed a place in its last four runs. It's been in the top two. So I think to go $4.60 and even $1.65, I think it's a good each-way play. So I'm going to have it on top. Have number seven, Master of Wine, who won't want to get too far back from this leader. I sort of kick away and, and uh, give it something to chase down. But, gee, it was impressive last time out at Randwick at a benchmark 88. Won that by four lengths. It was a terrific run. It's never missed a place in this track. It would definitely be a top two chance. It's the main danger to my on top pick. Number four, attention runs. The other one's going to be right in the finish. It's going to be a long way back, but it, it'll be coming home late. It's coming out of good form behind, in the Metro behind Come Play With Me. Only one point and a half lengths off there. Prior to that, it was beaten by Hush Rider by half a length in the Newcastle Cup. And Hush Rider obviously came out one last week, double figure odds. Uh, so this horse has got a very good chance, num number four, attention run. It's knocking on the door. It'll be finishing the top three for me. Uh, the other one I want to give a bit of a chance to is uh, number three, Naval Warfare, of Chris Ball and Jay Ford. Uh, this horse is coming out of Melbourne form. It was uh, beaten up by Valak at Mornington in a the Anset Classic on that occasion. Prior to that, it was very good behind Alfred. So if it could get that for, sort of form and find that again here, it'll go very close. I think $12 is a bit of overs. So recap the numbers for me. Number six, Repeto Shapara on top for me to beat number seven, Master of Wine. In for second, number third, number four, Attention Run. And then for fourth, number three, Naval Warfare. Also want to give it a chance to number eight, re-edit. Re it comes up to its right distance range here. It was very, actually not too bad by Massa Wine last time out. And comes up to 2,400 metres. Last time it was at this distance range. It was beaten by Mr. Quickie in the Queensland Derby. And probably that was two lengths off Canedna in a 2,200 metre race, group two there. So this horse is coming up to its right dip, distance range. So don't be surprised if you see this horse get into the numbers either, uh, into the finish. Recapping, uh, moving on to race number seven. It's the Bondi Stakes, 600 metre, three-year-old race here. Look at the speed map for this one. It's a very nice field as well. Just thinking a Collada will find the top. I'd say Zabrowski and Erno will be just in behind them, uh, and they'll give them all something to catch. Uh, just interesting with Just Thinking here coming back to the 600 metres. I think it actually suits perfectly for it. Uh, it's gone out to the 2,000 metres. was beaten by Shadow Heroes, the current derby favourite. Uh, prior to that, was beaten again by Shadow Hero, and then at the 1,500 metres, beat Subedar. So I think this horse coming back in distance might be the way to go. Uh, it, it'll be nice, and it's rock-hard fit. It'll lead all the way, give him something to catch. So I'm going to put it on top. I had a number one, Kubrick, who, of course, was my uh, Caulfield Guineas top pick, and it was a bit of a disappointing run. It was, But it was three wide, no cover, so I'm willing to forgive that. If it comes back to the sort of form it was showing prior to that behind Bivouac, who we've seen, yes, 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 come out of that form as well, it's... The superior forms. This horse got a great chance of the $4.60, so I've got him for second. Uh, in for third, number 10, Kuri Rupp. I think it's a bit of overs at the $10. Uh, I think it was a decent run last night by Collada. Just got a long way back, and Collada just sort of, I guess, led all the way. He didn't give him something, anything to catch in the Stan Fox. If it come back to the sort of run that it showed three starts back at Mooney Valley, I think it would go very close here. Just want to see it now, but I think $10 is the right sort of price. And number five, Batiga, has got a lot of uh, ability. I did go against it last time out, and was proven right. It couldn't try, quite chase down Collada, but it's got a decent chance here again to improve off of that run. So recap then the race uh, for me, race number seven. Number two, Just Thinking for me on top, head of number one, Kubrick in for second. In for third, number 10, QE Rupp, and in for fourth, number five, Batiga. We want to race number eight. It's the, uh, uh, oh, Jesus, Hawa. Kugaru Handicap for benchmark 78, over 1,200 metres. Wasn't that hard to say in the end. Uh, a lot of speed in this race, uh, quite a lot of them going forward. Ali Mertens, Roosevelt, uh, Safado, 
Testify, My True Love, Man of Peace, Poison Strike, Ron Star. There's a lot of them that will be getting forward in this race. And uh, as such, the, it'll be interesting to see where they land uh, in the run. But for me, I want to be with number three, Poison Strike, despite all that early pressure. Maybe you could sit behind and get a bit of cover and then pop out and give them something to catch. Uh, second up stats are excellent. So two starts with uh, second up for a win and a placing. It was a bit disappointing first up uh, behind Agent Pippa in, at Randwick, but I think oh, I'm just banking they can prove off that last preparation was in terrific form races. So and it tried really well leading into that race last start. So seven dollars fifty and two dollars seventy. I want to be with it on top. Ahead of number ten, Pakiri, who I think they'll run along at a perfect clip to set up for this horse who absolutely charged late behind Tony's reward at Warwick Farm in a benchmark 70. Isn't stepping up too much here. And uh, it, last preparation, it went around and behind the Autumn Sun in Group 2. Did finish last of 16 lengths, but the fact that they took it to that sort of race shows. And then it went to, a, um, it was only six, seven lengths off Sunlight in a Group 1 up the straight of Flemington. So, I mean, they really have tested out some good form. And, I mean, last preparation is a two-rolled. It beat Legend of Condor in a Group 3. So, this also has ability I think it's really building towards a win, and they're going to set it up perfectly for this horse to charge over them late. So I think $19 and $5 a place is an each-way play you can go with. So I'm going to have those two as my each-way plays. I'd suggest having a bet on both of them. The other horse that I'll be running on late is Grimoire. Uh, it's got some, it, it'll be coming home late based off the strong speed. And uh, also I want to give number six, Safado, who resumes here, a bit of a decent chance. So race number eight, number three, Poison Strike for me on top. Uh, as an each-way player, in for second, number 10 at Pakiri, uh, who I also give a good each-way chance to. In for third, number two, Grimoire. And the other one, sorry, number 12, Coterie, was my other on top pick. No where I got Safado from, but number 12, Coterie in for fourth. Moving on to race number nine, final race of the card, 1,500 metre benchmark, 78. Look at the speed map in this one. I'd say Mercurial Lad and Burgeon will find the top. Romney Girl won't be far off with Al Mode. Not a whole lot of speed in this, so as such... I think these leaders might be hard to catch, and uh, the, the one I want to be with is number 11, Romney Girl. It goes around at $5.50 here. It was a little bit disappointing last time out, but uh, it was beaten by Pancho on that occasion. Just run over late. They did run along pretty quickly, and Pancho stormed down the outside, finished over the top. Prior to that, it was a really good win, beating a Sedition at Can Canterbury in a benchmark 78. So it comes this race here, third up. Looks The race looks perfectly to suit. I think it's going to be extremely hard to beat. So I've got it on top of uh, number 12, uh, Napoleon Solo. I thought it was a bit of overs as well. Uh, this horse is coming into this off a first up run where behind Elmo at Warwick Farm. Got a long way back, charged the line late. I think second up here will improve off of that performance. And $9.20 of the place, a pretty good each way play. Uh, in for third, number three, Shawnee at the $5. This is definitely uh, a, a winnable race for it. It comes off the first up run by Grey Worm, who I've got on top early in the card. It really did go the line well there. Uh, steps right back in class. Hasn't been in this sort of grade for quite a while. When it actually, in fact, for for a seventy-eight rated race, it hasn't been this sort of company since it finished second to Fidelia. I mean, that's we know that's that's possible group form, not necessarily seventy-eight form. So this horse comes in this really well uh, presented, and it looks to be uh, a very winnable race for it. And in for fourth, number two, five, Burgeon, who'll be sticking on the speed. We're just beaten by Sakura last time out, who of course won during the week as well. Unfortunately, beating some COVID spirit, which was much to my despair, which I tipped on top of the $10. But anyway, the form line's been frank nonetheless, so give it a good chance as well. So good last race if you finish the card. Number 11, Romney Girl on top for me. Head number 12, Napoleon Solo in for second. In for third, number three, Shawnee. And in for fourth, number five, Burgeon. Uh, looking through the race, uh, my best bets of the card. Uh, look, I do think that Race number one, number five, close to me. It'd be really hard to beat the two dollars forty. So it's race number one, number 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 five, close to me. And the other one that I want to give a good chance to as one of my other best bets of the card. Uh, just having a rock and roll through. Uh, look, I think race number race number six, number number six, Rapido Shapiro, would be pretty hard to beat the four dollars sixty. So it was race number one, number five. Care to think at the uh, five dollars? Uh, sorry, two dollars forty. Close to me. Not care to think. Sorry, pun. I'm having a bit of a shocker here. But and race number six, number six, Rapido Shaparo. My best each way plays. Well, for me, I want to be with race number eight, number race number eight, number ten, Pakiri, and number number three, Poised to Strike. And also, I want to have a bit of an each way play at race number. 
What was it? Race, race number five, number two, Miss Fabulous at the $10, 2 dollars ninety the place. So, guys, if you're following tomorrow, of course, enjoy the Cox Plate. If you've already done so, go and check out my video preview of that meeting. Uh, I've got my Manicata Stakes preview on the on the channel as well, if you want to get on, on that before tonight's racing. Uh, so, good luck tomorrow. Hopefully, we get plenty of winners. I'm uh, pretty confident the round week card. The Cox Plate meeting is very difficult, but hope we can find a few good each way plays there and get a few winners there as well. So, if you like your following tomorrow, fantastic racing. Thanks for all the support. If you haven't already done so, go check my other videos and my uh, social media page for all my tips. And uh, good luck tomorrow.